E aí, galera, tudo bem? Estamos aqui no DCS World F16 Viper. Essa sequência de vídeos que eu estou postando são dos arquivos lá do canal do Matt Agner, aquele CEO que posta os vídeos acadêmicos do F16 Viper. Até o outono de, desse ano de 2019, ele vai lançar vídeos explicando algumas coisas sobre o F16. Como os vídeos deles são públicos, eu vou reeditar eles e colocar aqui no nosso canal com legendas do YouTube. É, vou colocar a legenda do YouTube lá, vou copiar o vídeo e vou postar aqui no canal. Como os vídeos dele, eu já falei, são públicos, não vai ter problema. E como o meu canal não tem monitoração, ou seja, eu não ganho dinheiro para postar vídeo no YouTube, eu acredito que não vai ter problema. <cười> Mesmo assim, lá no na descrição do vídeo eu vou colocar todos os links dos arquivos original do Matt Egner. F16 Viper, acompanha aí. Hey everyone, Wags here from Eagle Dynamics, and in this DCS video, we're going to take a look at some of the improvements for the dogfight systems of both the Hornet and the Viper. Now, in the Hornet, we're going to have a much more accurate air-to-air -air gun sight. And the Viper, we're going to have the addition of the radar directed gun sight, much more accurate, and also a toggle switch for the AIM 9 between the slave and the bore sight modes. Let's get started. Let's first take a look at the radar directed gun sight for the Hornet. Now, what you're going to see is that using the uh, reticle for the air to air gun is much more stable now, it doesn't bounce around as much, and also the rounds are much more accurate on impact of where you're aiming. Let's take a look at a second pass. Now, in this pass, I have much more of a turning target, so I'm going to lock them up, and I'm going to have a much more of a lead on this target. So I'm going to pull the pepper over the target, pretty far away, nice and stable, put it over the target, pull the trigger, and nice hits. So as you can see, uh, using the Hornet gun sight is much easier than it used to be. So let's first take a look at the Enhanced Envelope Gun System, or the EGS. And we get here by going aft on the dogfight switch. And I have a pop. Hey everyone, Wags here from Eagle Dynamics. And in this DCS video, we're going to take a look at some of the improvements for the dogfight systems of both the Hornet and the Viper. Now in the Hornet, we're going to have a much more accurate air-to-air -air gun sight. And in the Viper, we're going to have the addition of the radar directed gun sight, much more accurate, and also a toggle switch for the AIM 9 between the slave and the bore sight modes. Let's get started. Let's first take a look at the radar directed gun sight for the Hornet. Now, what you're going to see is that using the uh, reticle for the air to air gun is much more stable now, it doesn't bounce around as much, and also the rounds are much more accurate on impact of where you're aiming. Let's take a look at a second pass. Now, in this pass, I have much more of a turning target, so I'm going to lock them up, and I'm going to have a much more of a lead on this target, so I'm going to pull the pepper over the target, pretty far away, nice and stable, put it over the target, pull the trigger, and nice hits. So as you can see, uh, using the Hornet gun sight is much easier than it used to be. So let's first take a look at the Enhanced Envelope Gun System, or the EGS. And we get here by going aft on the dogfight switch. And I have to pause as we go over some of the elements of the HUD. Now first we have the funnel, which we talked about in an earlier video. And as long as you have the wingspan of the target aircraft entered correctly in the manual page of the DED, you simply fly to place the wingtips of the aircraft on the edges of the funnel for an accurate shot. And next we have the attitude indicator in which the ends of the arc line up on the horizon. And as your nose is up, the arc will shrink. And as the nose is down below the horizon, then the arc will grow. Along the left side of the HUD, we have our G, our airspeed, our master arm switch setting, our mode, and our bullseye. Along the right side of the HUD, we have our altitude. I'll unpause now and lock up the target with one of the ACM modes. With the target locked up, we have some new symbology on the HUD, and let's talk about that. 
Now leading from the boresight cross to the top center of the HUD, we have a lock line that points in the direction of the radar lock target. And to the left of that, we have the number of degrees from the boresight cross to the target. In the bottom right corner of the HUD, we have the range to target and our closure to target. The small circle in the funnel is the radar directed aiming cue for the target you have locked up. You simply fly to place the little circle of the target and press the trigger. I'll unpause now until I get the aiming pipper over the target. Alrighty, so some more symbology to talk about. So this is the 12,000 foot gun reticle. And when the outside bar is solid, it means that the target is at or greater than 12,000 feet. And when it's under 12,000 feet, we'll start to unwind to reveal a segmented reticle. And the little line inside it, uh, that indicates the current range on that 12,000 foot scale. And the little triangle on the outside indicates the direction of the aircraft travel. It's an uh, aspect angle. Now, bracketing the aiming cue is the uh, T symbol, or also called the foresight cue in the Hornet. Now, ahead of the cue is a cross, and that's the acceleration rate of the target. And if you have lines on either, either side, that indicates the energy potential of that aircraft. The longer those lines, uh, the more energy it has for out of plane maneuvers. And then behind the aiming cue indicates the target's uh, maximum sustained turn rate capability. Now the last symbol we'll talk about is called the bullet at target range or the batter symbol. And this is a green circle with a dot in the center. It indicates where the uh, system is predicting those bullets to be landing on the target. And this is a very handy uh, visualization cue without having to use tracers. Okay, so let's try another uh, engagement without all the interruptions. And I think, as you can see, getting gun kills in the Viper is going to be a whole lot easier. The next new feature is if you have the AIM-9 selected to slave in the SMS, the seeker will automatically slave to the radar lock target. But now, if you hold down the cursor switch, you can actually go to bore sight. And this is really handy when you use the helmet to essentially look at the target, go to good tone, and launch that missile. Now, conversely, if I set the AIM-9 to bore on the Smiths, I don't have to hold down the cursor switch uh, to slew the AIM-9 seeker with the helmet. But now I can go ahead and select one of the ACM radar modes to lock up a target on the radar. And now I have it tracked on radar. And at this point, if I go ahead and hold down the radar cursor switch, it will automatically slave the seeker to that radar lock target. But if I then release the uh, cursor switch, it will go back to bore sight mode. Anyhow, folks, that's a little overview of some of the cool things we have coming for the Horn and the Viper. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.